Hello Sagittarius. Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. I kind of expected you to come out last right before um, the Sagittarius new moon on the 12th, but I think this message wants to, I guess, sort of come out earlier so you're, you're ready. Now what's interesting is that the first card is this full moon temple, and what we have is a new moon. But uh, the card says celebration peak transcendent moment. And here now in Sagittarius season, I want to say that this is a message to be festive, to be merry. You know, I prefer, right, people say happy holidays. I prefer merry holidays. Right? There's this feeling of conviviality and um, fun and, you know, games and uh, lightheartedness with the word merry. And that is coming out here with this otter and actually this fox. I have sort of a, a wind in the willows. Um, idea here that the fox and the otter meet and decide to have a party. Right? They're going to have a big celebration in the forest. Right? Everyone will be invited. And you know, this, right, this sounds really wonderful, but I have this, well, I don't have this sense. I have the, the, what the cards want to say is that you may not be feeling that mood. At the bottom of the deck, we have this Eight of Cups. And this, right, coming out particularly, this sense of all these broken cups. So what you may really be experiencing at the moment is some sort of feeling of loss. That something is gone, um, that you can't get it back. Uh, things maybe that you miss, even if they weren't the thing for you. And then this Ten of Swords, right? This, this endings, right? This final corpse. And this is a very corpsey corpse with the sword through the eyes. So it may be that you're having, right, that you're feeling more of this. Because while we have this nine of pentacles here, this idea that you have everything that you need to celebrate. That, you know, all the eggs are in the basket. That where you are now is worthy of celebration. What you may be feeling instead is this five of pentacles. And this very sad five of pentacles Perhaps, um, you know, maybe you are somewhere else, not at home where everybody you know is, perhaps you're traveling, or perhaps this whole process, right, this Eight of Cups, Ten of Swords process has meant that a lot of people are no longer with you. Maybe you have released relationships so that you're feeling very alone. And here with this hyena, right, who's a, this is a liminal space of the hyena. 
this quarter moon. Now this is a quarter waxing moon. So there is, right, there is growth, there is expansion, there is light increasing, but you may not really be able to feel it at this moment. You may mostly be feeling that Eight of Cups, Ten of Swords thing. And like what you really want is a refuge. that you, you know, just sort of want to, you know, I don't know, hide away, go somewhere by yourself, right? We have this starry night card under that, you know, where she's maybe alone in the forest in some sort of vigil happening. But at the bottom of this deck, is the hummingbird spirit of joy. And then we have this beautiful transition happening in these three cards. We have this maple fall image, right? This red maple. And it says generosity, which I think is, you know, about generosity of spirit. Um, perhaps generosity towards yourself and others. So this, this fall image. And then we have winter and this bare spirit of healing. And then we have this very spring-like image with transformation and the butterfly spirit. And it's interesting that there's a pearl here. Um, pearls figured in the Aries reading. So maybe there's something in, in the fire element, perhaps. A connection with, and a connection with Aries, with the spring. So there's this whole process that wants to happen. And I want to say that, that yes, right? You will want some quiet time as we go into the, the, you know, sort of the darkest part. But even though we are in the darkest period here, at least in the Northern hemisphere, it is also the return of light. So we're, we're in this, this place where the day is shortest on December 21st. But then from that point on, the days are getting longer. So there will be time, Sagittarius, for quiet, for solitude. But that perhaps this is not yet that time. There's a call here to this celebratory spirit. We have this Ten of Stones home. And to me, this often, and it does today, looks like an invitation to leave. <laughs> right to cross the threshold out into the world. And there's this little page of arrows, Wren, who seems to be calling, right? He's, he's got otter and fox's invitation to the party that's happening. And at the bottom of the deck is this ace of bows, the spark of life. So peoples around the world celebrated this moment of solstice in different ways. 
but always with the sense of the right the eternalness of the light that it you know it dims through this winter period but that it returns and it's never entirely gone So that there's, right, there's a, there's almost an innate need for that merriness, that conviviality, that celebration at this moment in time. And so we have the three of bows, the three of wands. Right? And it's like he's welcoming you to the party in the forest. And everybody's there. Um, we have the guardian. A symbol of death and rebirth. A symbol of the liminal space. Um, and, you know, we, we often talk about, right, like the journey down into darkness and meeting the guardian there. But you also meet the guardian on the way back, right? You meet the guardian on the return too. As you're coming out of the underworld journey, you meet the guardian again, going in the other direction. Right, when he can say, yeah, great job. Go and celebrate. Right, go and be this page of wands. Go to the go to Otter and Fox's party in the forest. And do this in whatever way is available to you. You know, this may be meeting with just one friend. It may be, you know, going to a rowdy bar and, you know, hanging out with people there, meeting new people in that way, even if it's just for the night and then you never see them again. Go to some, you know, perhaps public event. If your town has a, you know, a winter celebration thing, a tree lighting or, um, you know, maybe there's a, um, a candlelight service at your church. I did not grow up with uh, any religion really in, in my childhood, but we did go to candlelight service on Christmas Eve and we would sing Christmas carols. And I always really loved that. And it wasn't you know, we, we were, you know, there as a family and there were other families and, um, you know, there wasn't really any mingling afterwards or anything, but there was something about being in that group, even though we didn't all know each other and we, you know, kind of went our separate ways afterwards. There's an energy that's created in those places and situations. So we have the lovers. And I want to say that this is an invitation to, to come out. And I want to say that this is your soul who is inviting you to come out and play. And I think you want to, the seven of swords is here. And there's this sense that she is running, right? She's running, her arms are open to catch the energy, right? Her whole heart center running forward towards this. But on the other side, we have this King of Swords who today looks, right? He's kind of dour. <laughs> um, you know, he's got his hood on. 
sort of solitary. So this, um, and at the bottom of the deck, we have the tower. And in this deck, the tower is not so much destructive as it is forbidding. And I think that you've left this tower. I think that you engaged with it over this past year. But that now you are, you're leaving it behind, but you, you sort of keep looking back. But your wider self and spirit here with the wheel turning want to invite you into a different energy. Right, this nine of cups, right? And I feel like she's gotten dressed for the party. She's having a look at the mirror at how fabulous she is. Before she goes out and meets up with this very festive death. We think of transformation happening in our darkest moments, right? The dark night of the soul, the journey into the underworld, all of these things. And absolutely, transformation often happens there. But it can happen in joy, too. We can transform in joyful, rose-filled moments. So what is the advice? Not surprisingly, we have the Queen of Wands. <laughs> and actually below her, the Queen of Pentacles. Right, the embodiment of inspiration and uh, resources. Our animal body. Right, that wants to light candles and build bonfires and, um, you know, engage in celebration and merriment. And at the bottom, we actually have the Hierophant, right, kind of the master of ceremonies. And this Ten of Cups. Right, the Hierophant as Lord of the Dance, as um, sort of the leader of the Bacchanalia, the Saturnalia. And the Six of Wands, right, joining in the group celebrating with a group as much as is possible. Even if they're not a group that you know, just, just getting out there into a crowd at a celebration, feeling that upwell of energy that's actually happening at Yule. Right, the sun does its right solstice is this is the stillness of the sun for several days when it appears to rise at the same place before it starts its journey along the horizon but then it right everything begins to get lighter and we don't really notice it you know, until later after January, sometime in February, that's when we have in bulk candle mass. But we can bring that, that energy of lightness in even before we can see more sunlight. And so we have the lovers again, and this time distinctly as choice, right? We can choose 
what's on this side. So the Queen of Wands, the Six of Wands, the Hierophant leading the Ten of Cups celebration. Or we can choose what's on the other side, which is this King of Swords energy that we had beneath this uh, perhaps getting up in the head too much, perhaps um, thinking too much about, you know, being disciplined, um, you know, uh, inner authority, whatever it is for you. And then this Four of Cups, where we don't want to take this cup that Spirit is handing us, where we kind of Right, he's got his arms crossed. It's kind of a stubborn refusal to feel joyful, to feel better. And that can happen, you know. We may have, right, a period where we feel poorly where, you know, maybe we feel very upset, we feel grief or pain. And then it ends. And it's almost like if we are joyful that we somehow negate that feeling or we say we were wrong, right? It was a mistake that we felt bad. Right, that we can't, we have to, or you know, right, there's like this clinging somehow to, to that, that upset feeling, to that distress. Right, we cling to it rather than saying, oh, that was just, right, we had a bad moment when things didn't feel so good, but it's okay. Right, the sun returns and that is natural and we can embrace it. So there's your choice. You can kind of stick to this, you know, wanting to hide away and, um, you know, lick your wounds perhaps, or, um, you know, stay in that, in that, underworld journey space that maybe you've experienced a little bit through this fall season. But healing, right? Healing can happen in merriment. In fact, it, it may need to. It may be that the final healing is always in the light, right? The final healing is that return when you step back out of the tunnel. And rejoin the world. So I advise you, I never say should, of course, but I would advise you to go to Otter and Fox's party in whatever way you can. I wish you a very merry, merry season. And I will see you next time, Sagittarius, so long.